life isn't half so palmy. You get away from your wife, but it's not like the life that you've lived up to now. But oh, don't let me make you nervous. Once you get in the service, very soon you'll know if you're a soldier man or no. You're the type who can sleep the night on the pebble stones on the beach at Brighton and like it. You love the army. If you're the type who wears double-breasted to hide the fact that you're pigeon-chested, then buddy, you love the army. If you can't take a tank apart with ease and oil and grease up to your knees and taste the petrol in your tea and sing tanks for the memory. If at home before you get up or your mother brings you a morning cup or you'll miss that. Ah, oh, yes, you'll miss that. You'll just get a bugle when day is dawning and a kick in the pants if you're late in the morning at Reveille. Yes, siree, you love the army. If you're the type who can sleep the night on the pebble stones on the beach at Brighton, I like it. Mm-hmm. You love the army. You're the type who wears double breasted to hide the fact that you're pigeon chested and body. Oh, oh, you love the army. If you can take a tank apart with ease, in oil and grease up to your knees, and taste the petrol in your tea, and sing tanks for the memory. If at home before you get up, or your mother brings you a morning cup, or you'll miss that. Oh, yes, you'll miss that. You'll just get a bugle when day is dawn. I don't know. I nearly missed it. I was cleaning my buttons. I was ironing my step-ins. Stand and eat. Stand and eat it. Well, B Company, your training is now complete. As every one of you have volunteered for overseas service, I am glad to be able to tell you that from tomorrow, B Company will be posted and attached to an infantry battalion. And wherever that battalion goes, you as a subsidiary unit will go with it. Starting from noon today, You will be granted five days embarkation leave. That doesn't mean you'll be going abroad directly you come back. But it's all the leave you're likely to get. So make the most of it. B Company, attention! Dismiss! America? She's telephoning her boyfriend in Mansfield. Mansfield? I spent a week there one afternoon. I'm glad I haven't got a love life for people to talk about. It's better to have people talking about your love life, my girl, than not to have one and end up talking to yourself. I'll take a chance. Now, how shall I break the news to Arthur? You mean that soon he's going to be motherless? Now, look, Gwenny, I've had enough of the little mother cracks. Well, I've never known a man so helpless. He's not helpless. He's just a little too romantic for modern day life. And how does the great man's daughter react to the good news? The great man's daughter is duly thrilled. Thank you. I bet you are. Daddy will probably make you a commandant now. Oh, why don't they leave me alone? I can't help if my father happens to be... Of course you can. But you should have been born a poor but dishonest parents like the rest of us. Hey, Ralph and Ipers, come here. Arthur King, War Office, Whitehall. Yeah. Try to see if gets there before the armistice. Let's try to get on leave before then, too. Don't worry, kid. We'll get a lift to London in no time. They don't stop so much now. They do for me. Lucky Ashley, they call me in the Yukon. <laughs> In 
trouble? Oh, no, just a slight attack of pitch pipe. I suppose you've got leave passes. Sure, right here. Yes, here's mine. For the love of Pete, I must have left it behind. Oh, I've got one, honest engine. Oh, well, you'd better go back and get it before you meet a red cat. Oh, sure, thanks a lot. But aren't you a... Lucky Ashley, they call her in the Yukon. All darn things to leave behind. <laughs> Can I do anything? Yeah, beat it. Now, that's what I like about the modern army. Civility, courtesy. Wait a minute. You're not going to London, are you? That's exactly where I am going. To the big city, where weak girls go wrong and strong girls go regularly. Well, make room for a couple of regulars. But I can't, Gwenny. My leave pass. You can have mine. I'm not going any place tonight. Oh, sounds promising. But, Gwenny. We're not passing up a lift after all this. Oh. It's not bad at all. I'm glad you're satisfied. Of course, neither of you are what the boys of B Company would call smashers, but you've got something. Thanks. I was getting worried. Mind you, you're a hundred times better than the dames around B Company. Well, that's something, too. They all look like professional blind dates. I bet the boys in B Company are worth seeing. I'll settle for Dibley. Oh, are you two kids from Dibley? Isn't that the place the Dan Caron girl stationed at? It is. Why? What's it like having a celebrity cluttering up the camp? Personally, I'm delighted. Yeah, they're very close friends. They uh, go about together. Of course, she gets all the soft jobs. Oh, of course. Yesterday, she spent six hours greasing a lorry and four hours emptying salt. Oh, Senator Ripley. You go for the Duncaran dame, don't you? I don't like favors and I don't like favorites. I think everyone in the army ought to stand on their own bottom. I wouldn't know about that. I suggest we drop the Duncaran dame. Uh, what's your name? The name's Smith. We're both Smith. Smith? Yeah, we're sisters under the coffee. She's Annie, I'm Fanny. Smith. From Ballum. Well, listen, Annie, I'm off duty when I deliver this. How about meeting me at Smoky Joe's for dinner? We Smiths don't go out with every Tom, Dick and Harry we meet. I'm not Tom, Dick or Harry. I'm Lance, Lance Elliott, the best-looking driver in the Fusiliers. I wonder you didn't join the Navy and let the world see you. Look out, duck, red caps. OK, fellas, you can surface now. Well, what is this? I thought perhaps you two wanted me to be alone. That's how they squashed the invasion. What, with one knight on horseback? One knight? He wasn't a knight. He was King Arthur. He had the strength and courage of 50 knights. It wasn't so hard then. They didn't have up-to-date arms in those days. Oh, I don't know. They had pikes. Finish your rosy. Of course, this King Arthur stuff's only a fairy story, isn't it? Fairy story? Yes, like Father Christmas and storks. Certainly not. King Arthur was the greatest man who ever lived. If he was alive today, he'd make history. <laughs> I'll say he would. He'd be 1,400 years old. <laughs> he'd be just about right to be a general. Come on, Arthur, drink it up. All right, all right, and don't be so free with my Christian name. Before you know it, all the other kids in the building will be calling me Arthur. They do. What? Just Arthur? No mister, nor a squire? No, nothing. It's your own fault. You ought to stick up yourself more. I bet he did. Ah, but King Arthur was a gentleman. Do you know, at the first sign of danger, he put on his armor, he grabbed his sword Excalibur, leap onto his horse, and face the enemy without fear or reproach. Have at thee! Have at thee! King Perk! Yes, sir? Where's that letter of Swami left? Oh, it's all done, sir. Yes, sir. What's all this doing in red? Swamiland's always in red, sir. Of course it's in red, but it doesn't reach up here. 
Well, it did in the one o'clock news. There's been a six o'clock news since then. It's all green now, right down to here, like it was yesterday. Uh, won't yesterday's map do, sir? No, that's going to the anti-waste bin. You'll have to do another. Oh, so you've done another one of these. Oh, yes, sir. Do you realize that the pincer movement made by King Arthur on the Saxons in 495 AD is almost identical with the one Is this your idea of a war effort? Wasting the department's time? Well, I didn't do it in working hours, sir. I did it in my own time. With your own ink on your own paper, I suppose? Yes, sir. I wouldn't think... Oh, I did use the office knife to sharpen my pencil. Ah, well, you can use the office waste paper basket to put it in. What are you doing? Well, he told me to throw it away. You are a twerp, if you'll pardon the word, but you really are. Twerp? Who are you calling a twerp? You're only a squidget yourself. Oh, yes, it's easy to be tough with me, but you knuckle under to that. That happens to be my superior officer. Superior officer? Does he know as much about tactics as you do? I don't know. Can he draw maps like you? No, but he is in uniform. He doesn't have to feel embarrassed when his girl goes home off leave. Oh, you're too touchy. Nobody expects you to fight. You're reserved. Reserved? I'm a man, aren't I? What do they expect me to do? Knit comforts for the ATS? Who was that? That's Herbert's sister. She's taken his place. What, little Herbert the page? Yes, he's left. I suppose he got fed up being a page and tore himself out. No, he's joined the air training corps. The... Everybody's joining something but me. I suppose you'll be going next. Shouldn't be surprised. I'm brown off being a brownie. Yes, and I'm white off being a white hole warrior. Ooh, hold that. Oh, oh, sorry. Susan, how did you get here so quickly? Your telegram's just arrived. Just arrived? Hell, I've been here half an hour. Oh, Susan. Oh, I am glad to see you. Is that all the glad you can muster? Children. Don't mind me. Give her a smacker. Say, you know all the answers, don't you? What's the use? Nobody asked me the question. That's what night school does for you. Pity you didn't go to night school. Oh, Susan, this is wonderful. How do you think I look? Terrible. Eh? Brown tie, blue shirt, grey suit. What's the idea? Camouflage? Well, if I'd known you were coming home on leave, I'd have seen that I matched. So you've cast your clouts. I can explain everything, Susan. Listen to me, Arthur King. For weeks I've braved the scorn of the camp to knit you some woolies. I know, Susan. I've suffered in silence the cracks about knitting little garments. Oh, I'm not that small. Well, the least you can do is to wear them. I did wear them, but I had to leave them off. They were bringing me out in a rash. They'll be bringing you out in a wooden overcoat if you don't look after that chest. Oh, there's nothing wrong with my chest. It's a good solid 24. <coughs> Now, Arthur, you've got to be very brave. I know I said I'd be tickled to death to wear them, but that was just the trouble. I nearly was. I'm not talking about the Woolies now. I'm talking about me going abroad. Abroad? Susan, you don't mean... It may be a matter of days or weeks or even months, but... Oh, Susan, this is terrible. Of course it isn't. Well, I'll be back before you even know I've gone. You will write to me, won't you? Sure, I will. And, Susan, when you come back, you'll find me waiting for you. Just as I am. Atta boy. Now, where do you want me to take you tonight? No, this may be your last leave. It's my treat tonight for a change. We'll go to the Ritz. But surely you can't go now. Haven't you any work to do? More oh, piles. I've got a green in all the reds and red in all the greens. But I'll do it if I have to sit up all day tomorrow night. I don't know how you do it. Well, surely you've heard about the ant, that happy little creature. He's too conscientious, have it, sir? <laughs> Beavers too, and others who make energy a feature. They convey their happiness in their work. But here and now I'm telling you the facts for what they're worth. I beat the ants and the beavers too, I'm the happiest one on earth. Got a bee in my bonnet and a honey on my mind. Mm -hmm. Da da de da, she's not the ration kind. Got a bee. And I'm humming all the day. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now everything's okay, okay. I don't come. You'll hear this happy sound as I go buzzing round. This sweetie pie I found. You can bet money on it. She's loving me inclined. 
de da de da, my sugar's so refined. Got a bee on the bonnet and a honey on my mind. Got a bee in my bonnet and a honey on my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's not the ration kind. He's in my bonnet and I'm humming all the day. They want to show you right next to my arm. I'm afraid I haven't a pass with my fire watches can't do. And you, miss? Oh, sure. Just a minute. You're not Miss Gwen Duncan. Well, I, I... What's the idea? I think you better come along with us. Hey, she hasn't done anything. You mind your own business. This lady is my business. Oh, she is, is she? Well, who is she? She's, uh, whoever she says she is. Hey, mon dieu, mon dieu, cherchez la femme. Fais cherchez easy her. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Femme, femme, fi fai fo femme. Quoi? I knew you wouldn't stand there while the femme was being cherchée. I know you're a policeman now, but you must have been young one. Now, look, chum, don't get funny with me. There is trouble, no? There is trouble, yes. <laughs> Get out of it! Get out of it! 
And when I tackled her on the subject, he started a rough house. Who oh, I never did. Well, what are you going to say about it? Well, nothing, but if he's telling the truth, I'd like to make it clear what a liar I am. Look, this is all my fault, so if anybody's got to be locked up, it ought to be me. I must warn you that anything you say may be yeah, taken... Yeah, 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 I know all that. I've seen it on the movies. Oh, I saw that picture where the fellow and the girl... Silence! Now then, Miss, um... My name's Ashley, Susan Ashley. I have a past, but I left it behind. Uh, Miss Don Karen's a friend of mine, and she loaned me hers. There you are. You see? There's been a gross carriage of Miss Justice. Time enough to decide that in the morning. Well, it's easy enough to prove. Why not ring up Miss Duncaron? I'll pay the tuppence. Oh, no. Allow me. I insist. Her number's Belgrave 0933. Belgrave 0933. Miss Duncaron. That ought to fix it. You're welcome. Now, what about you? Well, to cut up a long story sideways, I'm Private Gimbal, number 77 ho 777 of the 9th Fusiliers. The Ninth Fusiliers? Oh, well, fend me with a kipper. Susan belongs to you. Belongs to me? Yes, you and she are going to be joined. Well, congratulate me. Can we get on with this or not? Well, isn't it a coincidence? Susan's been posted to the Ninth Fusiliers. They're comrades in arms. I'm not a comrades in arms. I'm a cook. Oh, a cook. Oh, well, comrades in legs and loins, then. Hello? Post Street Police Station. Could I speak to Miss Duncaron, please? I regret to say Miss Duncaron is not at home at the moment. Well, I understood her to say she was dining at Smoky Joe's. Then when I was 12, I fell in love. He had long plaits and a teeth brace. I'm not boring you, am I? I've always been allergic to teeth braces. You swore eternal devotion. Of course. We did. I gave her an enormous sapphire ring I got out of a cracker. Next day, I saw the paper boy wearing my sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? I don't mind. But the answer's no. <laughs> Can't you be serious for a moment? Not when you call me Annie. Well, Annie. My motto's gone by the board today. Mm, B Company doesn't waste much time. There's no time for time these days, Annie. Tonight is just you and me here together. Tomorrow, who knows what might happen. I might be driving my lorry and the whole lot go up. You mean you drive a cheese about? Oh, what's it matter? You've got to take life in your stride, Anne. Live for today and... Excuse me, Sam. Oh, hell. Uh, there's a military policeman who'd like to speak to Miss Duncaron. Oh, do I look like it? Just a minute. A military policeman? Yes, Miss Duncaron. All right. Tell him I'm coming up. Sorry, Lance. Oh, not at all. I didn't realize how honored I was. But it started as a gag. Very humorous. It'll probably have Balaam in hysterics. Bill, wait a please. Lance. Oh, don't forget the military policeman. Your father probably sent him. You shouldn't be dining with a mere private. Serve so you right if you had to pay your own bill. Sorry to trouble you, Miss Duncaron. Something wrong? Any idea where your pass is? My pass? Why, well... I lent it to a friend. Oh, and I'm afraid you'll have to come to the police station and identify your friend. The police station? You mean she's... Awaiting a military escort. Oh, lucky Ashley, they call her in the Yukon. Annie, Gwenny, I want to apologize for being a swine. My apologize isn't your fault. Can we get a cab? Look, if you're in trouble, I'm coming with you. You sound like the hero in East Lynn. There's a cab outside. Oh, wait a moment. Is it your duty to arrest a soldier without a pass? It certainly is. Then do your duty. I give myself up. <laughs> well, if this isn't another coincidence, it's Lance. I'm thrilled. You know... Do I know him? Why, he drives me my spuds and cabbages every day. Spuds and cabbages? Oh, now, wait a minute. Let's take life in our stride. Tomorrow, one of my lorries might... You, you hero. Well, anyhow, my name isn't Smith and I don't live in Balham. Oh, Miss Ashley, come here. Can you identify Miss Ashley as the lady who gave you a pass to? Of course I can. But she has got a pass. Oh, I see. Any questions? Don't you know it's a military offence to lend your pass to anybody else? Of course she doesn't. Of course I do. Of course she does. Then I'm afraid we'll have to hold you for escort as well. 
Oh, don't worry. Your old man will get you out of trouble. This is ridiculous. She's got a pass. I'm the only one you have to lock up. That's right. We don't want all these other people in prison with us. What's your name? Dun Karen. How do you spell it? Oh, same as Dun Cow, only with a Karen. Of course, we'd love to let your father know about this. Sneak. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Yes? She's where? Before taking any action, I thought, well, one word from you, sir, and we could arrange an immediate release. Release? Certainly not. If she were any other ATS girl, you wouldn't release her, would you? No. Then why make an exception in this case? She got herself in jail? Let her stay there. Let them all stay there. I'd like you to realize that you've placed me in a very undignified position. Army regulations are not to be lightly disregarded, even by me. There was nothing disregarded, Daddy. <clears throat> Sir, Private Ashley had a pass. She just left it behind, and she was going out with her boyfriend. The whole thing was my fault. It was me what upset the apple drums. The apple drums? Yes, Your Magistrate. It was like this. My pass was on the up and down, but these two red breast caps they say I was committing a nuisance for letting them get away. Letting the police got, uh, uh, get away? No, Your Worship. This lady and her boyfriend. Well, I can see no useful purpose in prolonging this. I want you to appreciate that I can show preference for none, not even my own daughter. That's why you spent the night in prison. I suppose, uh, strictly speaking, I should have left you there. However, I got you out. And in return, I must ask you not to make things more difficult for me by discussing the incident outside. Oh, yes, sir. You can rely on me. I, too, sir. That goes for me. Good. Oh, uh, that, of course, applies to you, too, sir. Oh, no, it doesn't. I'm going to shout it on the beaches and in the streets and in the fields. And, if necessary, in the hills. Arthur! No, don't stop me, Susan. I might never start again. To you, sir, and all your brains test, I'm just a nothing. I'm a nil, stuck away in the corner, drawing maps that are out of date before the ink's dry on them. Oh, I know I'm nothing but a nothing. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of us nothings is. And if someone would only put us all together, we'd amount to a pretty big something. Please. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But what about all us horses who are willing to drink but can't be led to the water? There was a time in this country when a man wasn't considered a lunatic if he wanted to fight, and that's why I'm not going to let this chance go by. I will promise not to discuss this incident, but on one condition. And what is the condition? That you get me de reserved from the civil service and put in the fusiliers. His fusiliers. You don't know what you're doing. Why don't you stay lucky? And that is the price of your silence? Yes, sir. And that's all you want? Yes, sir. This is a situation probably without parallel in the history of this country. Well, if I might be allowed to ask, sir. So what? <clears throat> right. Well, I suppose I must see what I can do. It uh, may take a little time. Oh, there's no hurry. I'll give you 24 hours. room if I have any more of that. Shut up! This squad! That's Kane! Come! Come 
Right, stand it is. Well, you're now at Tawny Camp. For the time being, you're members of the Mechanical Army. Tomorrow, you'll start your Bren Gun Carrier course. You'll have four weeks of intensive training. At the end of that time, most of you should be good drivers. Some of you may not. If you pass out, you'll become permanent carrier drivers. If you work hard, there's no reason why you shouldn't all pass out. Just do your best, and good luck. All right, Sergeant, carry on. Right, from now until lights out, time's your own, and I want you to enjoy yourself. We're one big happy family here, that's what we are. And if you play the game with me, I'll be a father to you. Understand? Yes, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> nice little place you got here. Oh, don't stand up. Come up to get a piece of cake, please. Oh, I have a bun, the one with the currant on it. Arthur! Gwenny! When did you get here? I've just arrived by bus. I want a cup of tea and this bun with the currant on it. I'd never have known you, Arthur. You look sensational. What, in my austerity, Romford? I say, is Susan here? She's on duty at HQ tonight. Oh. One cup of, one bun. That'll be tuppence. What about the currant? It's on the house. Oh, look, there's Lance. You look, I've seen him. Oh, what's the matter? I thought you and he were... He makes me sick. Ah. Excuse me. Oh, thanks. Hey! Well? Forgotten the spoon. Hello, Lance. Hello, Arthur. So the little man made it after all. Hmm. I say, what's the matter with you and Granny? Aren't you, um... Oh, she makes me sick. Oh, that's funny. She said the same thing about you. What a good job you found out in time. <laughs> I mean, it would have been very awkward in a small flat. You forgot your change, Arthur. Oh, Tom. I say, Granny, come here a minute. What's the matter with you two silly girls? She's breaking in a new halo and it hurts. I've already told you. I think you're a smug, conceited, overbearing... Bumptious. Bumptious. Oh, not bumptious. Your way, Arthur. Basement, please. Did you know your ears moved and you were angry? My... Oh... I'll have another cup of tea, please. If you think I'm taking orders from you... Well, aren't you on canteen duty? I am. Another cup of tea, please. I not only won't serve you... <laughs> Ooh, raspberry and red turnip, my favourite. What are you trying to do? Well, if this will stick up, I've done it. Done what? The Indian rope trick. It's very difficult to do with a blanket. Oh, go on, give him a hand, trainee. Oh, certainly, sir. And then shall I get your supper, sir? Hey, listen, you ginks, how is this for a letter? My dearest, adorable little sweetie pie, my love for you is like what Romeo had for giblets, only more so. When I am peeling the onions in the cookhouse, my eyes fills me tears. I long for the day when we can sit together again, holding each other's eyes and looking in each other's hands. I would give up a whole day's pay to taste again the necktie of your lips. All my love and kisses from your Utsi Utsi sweetheart, Maxine. Woo! Very good, bravo! Very good! <laughs> well, I'm glad you geezers like it. Uh, the question is now, who shall I send it to? No! Here, I'll give you a tanner for it. Yes? My boy, do you think you can barter or buy a man's soul for a miserable pittance, a tanner? Gentlemen of the jury, I appeal to you. Are you going to allow this deliberate profiteering, this black market in love letters to flourish before your very noses? Oh, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Who was it? Who what? Uh, who was it? W.C. Fields. Oh, wise guy, wise guy. Oh. Come on, shorty, give me a trinket. Give it to me, I say. Come sure, on. sure. Oh! <laughs> That must be the black sheep of the family. What did you say? I, I, I said you're welcome. Now, look here, Colonel Titch, you better hang on to your bedding. case I sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I am a Titch. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of little men done big things. Sit down. I... <laughs> hey, stop fighting. You lucky geezers, all of you. Who can tell 20 years from now which one of you will be played on the pictures by Gary Kipper? Don't let him rattle you, Arthur. One day we'll get half a dozen commandos to throw him in the River Bree. With half a dozen commandos, I'll do it myself. The River Bree? Did you say the River Bree? Sure. Make it the Thames, if you like. It's deeper. Hey, training. are we near the River Bree? Sure, I emptying my slops in there every morning. What, you mean you actually... Do you know where we are? We're in the Vale of Avalon. So what of it? What of it? This is the actual spot where King Arthur had his round table. Excuse me, please. What did you say it? 
King Arthur. Surely you've heard of King Arthur. I, I know the William IV, the Marquis of Granbury, the... Oh, it's not a pub, it's a person. King Arthur and his knights. The goodliest fellowship of famous knights, of which this world holds record. They must have been very dirty knights to have been as famous as all that. <laughs> oh, not that sort of knights. Ker knights with a K. Haven't you read the book? Any pictures? Oh, it's the most wonderful story in the world. So is no orchids for Miss Blandish. Hey, lads, listen to this. But lovelier than them all was she, the Cornish king's fair daughter, Guinevere, whose golden beauty won the hearts of men and turned their knees to water when she smiled. Oh, so they get water on the knees. She sounds a smasher. You know, the first time I saw her, I said to myself, well, who? Does it give her phone number? Phone number? That was Queen Guinevere. King Arthur married her. And they lived happily ever after. Oh. And they didn't see, because she fell in love with Lancelot. Who was he? The lodger? He was your handsome knighty. That's righty. No, he was King Arthur's most trusted companion. And what was the king saying to all this? He was very sad, but he forgave them both. For King Arthur was a gentleman. I should say he was a twerp. <laughs> king Arthur was the greatest gentleman who ever lived. And that isn't all. He... No, but that is. And that's lights out. That's the first time I've ever liked that bugler. Hey, trainee, trainee, would you like to hear about Excalibur? His magic sword, Excalibur. Tell Maxie, I'm busy. Hey, Maxie, do you know one night King Arthur was walking beside the lake when suddenly an arm rose up from out the bosom of the lake, clothed in white samite, mystic, wonderful, holding the sword, the brand Excalibur, and a voice said, Don't forget the diver, sir. Do you want me to go on with this or don't you? Sure, sure, proceeding. Mighty shall be the hand that wields this sword. Mighty in war, unlucky though in love. Will you shut up? Shut up, will you? Yeah, boy, yeah, just boy, 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 boy. King Arthur rode across and took the sword, and by its aid beat all his foemen down. <laughs> oh, you're not even listening. Y yes, I am. Uh, look, he could beat all the other geezers so long like he's got it uh, Excalibur box. Excalibur. Uh, yes, but as soon as he got it, all his private affairs went wrong. Guinevere ran off with Lancelot, so King Arthur took the sword and threw it back into the lake. I'll throw you into the lake if you don't keep quiet. Why don't you go to sleep? Yes, 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 yes. But before the sword could hit the water, the hand came out of the lake and grasped it by the hilt, brandished it round three times and pulled it under. Listen. Will you shut up? But if you long for glory, or your job is not so soft, here's a little story when you feel browned up. You know what King Arthur said in days of old. Give me a horse, give me a sword, give me a girl. You know what King Arthur told his knights of old. Go get a horse, go get a sword, go get a girl. For if you have a horse and sword and a girl that you adore, then buy me Halidom, you guys have something to bet for more. What King Arthur said, you can't ignore. Though you haven't a horse, you haven't a sword, no, not anymore. It takes a long, long way back to King Arthur's day if you've got a girl to go to battle for. Arthur King, thank you, Zanelles, 
number OIA2082. Let me have a look at you. Gee, you look cute. How does your uniform fit? Fine. All you keep quite comfortable? Couldn't be better. Do your boots hurt you? Not a bit. Gee, you must be deformed. Oh, that's not what the doctor said. Well, you're really in it now, Arthur. Are you glad? Yes, I'm going to show them. I'm going to be the biggest little man in the British Army. I'm going to do daring deeds. I'm going to... You're going to fall in now, or you're going to practice falling in all Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Leave to carry on, sir. Yes, please. Pull him round me. Now, you see in front of you an object called a Bren gun carrier. Officially, it's known as mobile firepower. Among the things it carries is a Bren gun, an anti-tank rifle, a two-inch mortar, hand grenades, and sticking bombs. What's a sticking bomb? <laughs> hey, King, are you learning anything? No, sir, I was listening to you. <laughs> now, let's get this straight once and for all. Just because you're in dungarees doesn't mean you're on the beach at Blackpool. You're in the army. And if ever you become capable of driving one of these things on the road, which I very much doubt, remember you're on parade. And we don't want no whistling at girls or V for victory signs. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Sergeant. Right. Here. Oh, sorry, Sergeant. Right. Now, when you get the order start up, you turn smartly to the left. Right. <laughs> you put your left foot on the bogey spring, your right hand on the carrier, and your right foot on the rest here. You lift the left leg over and drop easily into the seat in one. Once you're in the seat, you start the engine. When you've got the engine running, you put up your hand so. Dress back there. Go on, all of you. Now, have you got that? Yes, yeah, Sergeant. Right, Sergeant. All right, King. Let's see you try it. Well, I may be a bit shaky on one or two of the more intricate points. <laughs> Properly to attention, you're on parade, remember. Heels together. That's better. Right. Start up. <laughs> Don't turn round three times like a dog going to bed. Get out and try again. Sorrow. Now you put your left foot on the bogey spring. Do you know which is your left foot? Or shall I tie a ribbon on it? Oh, I know it, Sergeant. It's the one that goes in the bath first. Right. Now, properly to attention. Now, think what you're doing. Start up! You wouldn't like me to get you a ladder, would you? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> oh. What's the matter? Oh, I thought I'd broken the seat. You can't break that, it's made of iron. That's not the seat I thought I'd broken. <laughs> now, the controls on this are very similar to those on a lorry. Lights, on, choke, clutch, brake, ignition and starter. Now, this lever operates the seat you're sitting on for height. With the column turned that way, you lock the left track and vice versa. Have you got that? The left track. Which is the vice versa? If you do it vice versa, you turn the column to the right and lock the right track. In either case, the carrier spins round in a circle. Have you ever driven anything before? Well, I... My brother has a dairy farm and I once drove his milk float. Mechanically propelled? Oh, no, of my own free will. Switch this. Switch which? Switch that. Switch what? Switch what? Switch there where it says switch! Now, do you know what you've done? Yes, I, I've swatched. I've scratched. I've... <laughs> you've switched on. Though in switching on, you've actually switched off. I beg your pardon? You've disconnected the installation to the earthing wire there by causing the current which has been generated in the dynamo and stored in the battery cells to pass in the form of a charge through the distributor and so on to the plugs. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Oh, yes, Sergeant. I haven't missed a word. Oh, well, then you might repeat what I told you. You mean about the podge? Uh, the swudge? Repeat what I said from switching on. Oh, well, in switching on, I practically switched myself off the earth. <laughs> you what? I mean, I, I charged the dynamo with a sultan battery. 
The current charged in the dynamo and stored in the battery cell passes in the form of a... Oh, in the form of a charge through the distributor and down the plug hole. <laughs> Get back, all of you! Hey, stand to attention! You've all got to go through this in a minute. And if you're as bright as he is, God save the king. I say, Sergeant, it's all a bit new to me. Uh... Press the starter. Now your engine's running, you can put your hand up. Oh, I'm all right for a bit. Oh, I see what you mean. Once the driver's hand is in the air, the order mount is given. And the other two occupants, the gunner and number two gun, can mount. Now, is that clear? Yes, what are you doing? She's running amok. She's only missing. She's not missing much. Sit down! Now, put out your clutch. <laughs> That's your mat case. Your clutch pedal's down there. Oh, Sergeant, can't I go sick? No, you're all right. Now then, let out your clutch. Put in your gear. <laughs> let your clutch out! Now then, in with your gear. Give her a little throttle. Steady. Let her go. at speed 60 miles an hour. Did you have any help filling this in? Oh, no, sir. That would be like cribbing. Do you mean to say that at the time of the accident, your speed really was 60 miles an hour? That's only a rough guess. I wasn't going any faster. No, I don't suppose you were. Next time you fill in one of these reports, I should keep your speed as low as possible. As low as possible? Yes, sir. Oh, I was doing 10 miles an hour, sir. Hardly that. It was only five miles an hour on the clock, sir. As you can see for yourself, sir, I was in reverse. Some of you cost the government hundreds of pounds. Today you go through your final test. Hey, you with a saw. Which you do you want, Sergeant? You or you? Both of you. Stop that row while I'm talking. He says knock it. Well, what he says goes. Not you! Get on with the digging! Today you go through your final tests. If you pass, all your damage will be forgiven and forgotten. So see that you pass, some of you. What happens if some of us fail, Sergeant? The damage you cause will be deducted from your pay each week. Some of us are going to be in the army all my life. Attention! The men all ready, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Good. Right, pull in your carriers. There they go. The reason all the nice girls love our sailor. Come on, Slim. Only another two more inches and she'll be down. Don't you know any army you obey orders? Well, orders are to cut it down. The last order was stop sawing and it hasn't been cancelled yet. Well, get the lead out of your pants and come and do a bit of digging. Well, personally, I never believe in turning over the ground between the 1st of January and the, and the 31st of December. But if you must plant now, all you need to do is to break up the soil to a depth of a spade or fork. Take this out. And throw the lot over you. Good afternoon. Blimey, give a look. Hidden treasure. It's an old sword. Go on. I thought it was a new umbrella. So I drew my sword and carved my way through a living wall of redskins, dragging my canoe behind me. Get back. What's that? What's that there? Hey, it might be worth something. Perhaps it's an old relic. Yes, early 1938. Lady Godiva probably led the annual pageant with it. Keep digging. Maybe you dig up Lady Godiva. Hey, wait a drop. I got a brainstorm. I can get for this ten shillings. They wouldn't give you sixpence and a scrap heap. Maybe they wouldn't, but what about Arthur? Titch, what would he want with a prop sword? Prop, nothing. Supposing I told him this was ex -chemisol. What are you talking about, ex -chemisol? Yes, you heard the story about this King Arthur Giza, what that 12 Knights, Vida K, 
and along comes the snake in the woodshed and pinches his wife, Windermere. Oh, he'd never fall for that. Why not? If he thought this was King Arthur's sword, he'd be as happy as a square peg on a round table. Now, sometime during the test, you'll hear the rattle go. That means gas, and you put your respirators on. See that you do this smartly, or it'll count points against you. I shall start off over the course, and all you've got to do is to follow me, and see that you keep up. Start up! Sergeant, but I think I've got a flat caterpillar. You what? Get her out of here! If I take off the brake, I'm drowned. Put that gas mask on! an escort, sir. Hey, mind your dirty boots. I've just washed that. 
Never mind about your washing. We want to talk in with you. Yes. Come on. Oh! My vaccination! Hey, hey. The sword. You know, King Warrior call it from the table. Supposing somebody find him. The sword? Oh, you mean Excalibur? Yes, 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 yes. Supposing somebody was digging a field around here and they find this thing. How much would it be worth? Oh, thousands of pounds. Yes, I know, I know. But would it be worth 30 bob? Of course. That's our deal. We was going to keep it for ourselves, but I says no. If Tiddler didn't, never wouldn't have told us, we didn't, never wouldn't have known nothing about it. That's right. And we agreed to take 10 bob each from you. But uh, how do you know it's the sword? My very words. I said, how do we know? That's right. And I said we didn't know, didn't I? Uh, look, look, look. Take it in your hands. See if you can hold it. Yes, go on, try. Try, oh, go on. Of course I can hold it. Look, boys, he can hold it. When we tried, it jumped right out of our hands. Yes, right out of our hands. It jumped right out of your... And you dug it out of a field. Yes, a hollow field. It used to have been a lake, I shouldn't wonder. It doesn't seem possible. You don't have to pay us now. Sleep on it, uh, with it. Convince yourself. And... King Arthur's sword. What's the idea of this? Don't you know you're down for guard? Oh, that's not till six o'clock. I've got a quarter of an hour yet. You haven't. I pray my guard at 5.45. Well, you'll pardon me for saying so, but you've no right to. That's enough from you. Get a move on! Yes, we will. Do you fellas realize what this means? If this is Excalibur, it might alter the whole course of the war. You'll probably get a commission for a start. And when they make you the commandeer-in-chief, remember us. That's right, the fellas who've been nice to you. Hey, by the way, since you're going and gone, you won't need your cigarettes. Advance, friend. Susan! Well, if it isn't the Colonel himself. Hello, Granny. Hi, Arthur. What's the matter with your leg? Oh, it's a bit stiff. I say, what are you two doing out so late at night? We've got terrific news, Arthur. Embarkation tomorrow. It's official. Embarkation? Are we off then? First thing in the morning. Somewhere out east. Ooh, isn't that exciting? Now I've got a chance to have a cut at those jellies. I want their skins for the wardrobe. Bum -ba -da -bum -ba -da -bum -ba -da -bum. Say, they've been feeding you curry or something. Oh, Susan, if I was only sure. Sure of what? About my so um, sore leg. Oh, that'll get better. Now we must go through, Arthur. We're carrying dispatches. Oh, yes, the dispatches must go through. I suppose I'm not mentioned in them. No, wait till you get your war drum. Oh. Any message for Lance? Nothing polite enough to repeat. Don't tell me it's off again. Come on, Susan, we must get going. That's 11 on-agains and 12 off again. Yes, well, this is the last off again. So long, soldier. You'll be hanging from a medal yet. I wonder. <laughs> Excalibur. Where is the brand Excalibur? King Arthur's sword Excalibur gone, passed from my care, and I fear to mortal hands. King Arthur's sword wrought by a lonely maiden of the lake, and now it is gone. Arthur, King Arthur. Who calls King Arthur from the land of shades? Who breaks the silence of a thousand years? This is Milton. I am the lady of the lake, and like thyself, I want to be alone, to rest and guard this sword. But now it is gone, filched from my care.
by hand of mortal man. Then let that mortal listen to my words. Mighty shall be the hand that wields the sword. Mighty in war, unlucky though in love. Yes, sir. Ah. By Mahalidum. i 
kan ett happen på väg Med för tappen stå av vans Kan ett happen ta med What must I do to be one Of the fortunate lovers Can't I have any fun It's a thing you can't hurry, but it's hard not to worry when you're up on the shelf. How long must I suffer in springtime? It's a don't mean a thing time when you're, when you're all by yourself. lucky day when my heart is an artist must romance pass me by you knitting that for? It's for my brother. He's a civilian, poor fella. What is it? It's a sock. Hey, it's too long. I know it's too long. I can't turn the blinking heel. Do you like half? Yes. Cheerio. So long. I want two volunteers for grass cutting. You and you. Aye, but we've been excused duty, Sergeant. We've been intoxicated. Inoculated. That doesn't stop your volunteering. Come on, put a jerk in it. If this is the grass the local goats eat, I don't wonder they plant the hair into bootlaces. Ah, you don't do it right. Look, one grass at a time. <laughs> it's easy as kiss my head. Oh, it's this thing. It's the wrong shape. There's a big hole in the bit I want to cut with. If they give us the tools, we finish the job. Ooh. Cameron, Cameron. Do you know anybody called Cameron? Blimey, these geezers is jealous. They're our prisoners. What, our prisoners? Yes. Well, fancy letting them walk about loose like that. You ought to be locked up. Here. I cover them and you search them. No, let me cover them. You search them. No, I want to cover them. No, let me... You cover them. Eh, search, boo. Have you anything to declare? Least we stand. No, but we had a drop of rain this morning. What's going on here? Oh, come on! Oh! It's an hour. I found this bottle in his pocket, sir. Smells like carbolic. Oh, no, that's me. Hmm, that was meant for the reservoir. Sergeant, take those men back to headquarters. Very good, Chip. You better come as well. This is a good show. And I'll see you get some recognition. Me? I don't want no recognizing. I didn't done nothing. That's a good spirit. Quick, march! Not you, King. You stay and finish the job. Put your hat on. Oh, hello, Susan. 
you go do Lally. Don't ever walk about bareheaded in this sun. Oh, nothing can touch me. I'm invincible. Where did you catch that? Well, I don't want to brag or swank or anything, but I've just done the bravest act that's ever been recorded in the whole history of human combat. What have you done? Put your tongue out at someone? Well, I mustn't tell you. It's a military secret. But for the past few days, the Germans have been trying to infiltrate this position. Trying to infiltrate it? Infiltrate, you know, to come through clean and leave the dirt in the bottle. I know what it means, but uh, what's that got to do with you? I've captured three of the filters. No. Yes, they're in front of the Colonel now with the officer and Maxie. He's going to be mentioned in dispatches. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Susan? I was just cutting the grass. Wait a minute. Have you let that covered wagon take your credit? Oh, it's not my credit. It's Excalibur that did it. And I was just cutting the oh, same the grass. King, are you a man or aren't you? Well, they tie blue ribbons on me when I was a baby. Didn't you tell the officer what happened? He never asked me. He never asked you. Do you have to be asked everything? If you have anything to say, say it right out. Don't be scared of anybody. No. No. Susan, will you marry me? Well, I... Please. Listen, when I marry, it's got to be a man, not a jellyfish. I'm not a jellyfish. I'm sorry, Arthur, but it makes me mad to see people getting what ought to be yours. Well, as long as they don't get you. Well, you watch out, my lad. You never know. Oh, I do watch out, Susan. And the next time you catch a Jerry, write your name on him. I will. I'll scratch it on his handle. You do that. Well, so long, Tootsie. See you in the vestry. Ah, uh, happy day. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't want to be a swankpot, but they've made me a VBG. Maxie, something terrible's happened. A very brave geezer. Something's gone wrong. The sword won't work. Oh, so you found that out? Well, I've been trying to it tell you... It's all right just now. It was me who was to blame from the very start. Well, how can you be to blame? It's something I've done, and something I've done in the last 15 minutes. What I'm trying to tell now, you let is... let me see. What happened after I captured those three jellies? I sat down on my barrel. I saw Susan. I proposed to Susan. I said goodbye to Susan. Forget Susan and listen to me. I picked up the sword after Lance Elliot had thrown it away. Lancelot never threw the sword away. He never even had it. After that, I pulled up myself. I said Lance Elliot. Oh, Lance El Lance Elliot? Lancelot? Hey, Maxie, that's funny. The name's almost the same. Ah, uh, you got this King Arthur on the brains. King Arthur? Arthur King? Gwenny? Guinevere? It's history repeating itself, that's what it is. Oh, why didn't I think of it before? Look, the sword don't work. Can't you understand plain English? Of course it don't work. Do you know what I did wrong? But I proposed to Susan. That's what makes it all wrong, and the sword won't work if it's all wrong. Can't I get a word in sideways? Remember what King Arthur said? Mighty shall be the hand that wields the sword. Mighty in war, unlucky though in love. That's what he meant. I mustn't marry Susan. I must marry Gwenny. King Arthur married Guinevere. No, no, don't, don't do anything hastily. Oh, Arthur, where have you been? The whole British army is looking for you. Oh, Lance, this is awful. I'm in love with the wrong girl. Lucky to find it out before you're married. Oh, but you don't understand. I'm in a terrible spot. Well, you'll be in a worse one if you don't look slippy. You're due for patrol in ten minutes. Patrol? Oh, I forgot. Oh, I can't go on patrol. I must see Susan. <laughs> Excuse me. Shall we stop the war till you're ready? Oh, Lance, do me a favor. Take my patrol with Maxie and Jack. I'll take yours when it comes along. What? It's for your good as much as mine. I must see Susan and get things straightened out. Oh, please do it, Lance. Oh, sure. Thanks. Yes. You know the orders. No dogs allowed past here. Oh, this is an exception. I must see her. It's on compassionate grounds. What? Oh, oh, no, not bad. But I must see Private Ashley. Don't put a thing in writing If there's someone you adore Think of the trouble that you're inviting Don't put a pen to paper For mark my words you will find That it's a dangerous kind of capering If you want to express Your great devotion Take a tip from the bird They never bother to put a thing in writing Cause actions speak louder than words
see you, Susan. Destiny is at stake. Destiny? Say, you feeling all right? Listen, Susan, I've got to give you up. Hey? Ever since I asked you to marry me, the sword won't work. You see, you're not really my woman. It should be Gwenny. Guinevere, that is. I've got to stand between her and Lancelot. It's all happened before. Sure, it's happened before. I've seen strong men fold up like a jackknife. Oh, you don't understand. Lancelot is Lance Elliot. It's all ordained. Guinevere, King Arthur, Arthur King, the sword and everything. This isn't Sunstroke. It's history. Let's get this straight. What you're trying to tell me is that the proposal you just made, cancel it? That's right. I knew you'd understand, Susan. I don't want to give you up, but the salt can't be ignored, can it? Of course, Gwenny must be told, and you could do that so much better than me. Me? Yes, you don't mind, do you? Be quite honest with her. Tell her it's you I really love. Tell her you don't want her, but will she have you? That's right. All right, King. Up you get. Fall in between them. I don't know what you're talking about. Who is this rough soldier? You can cut that out, too. Wait a minute, Corporal. He isn't well. It's the son. You'll have a chance to tell that to the CO. But you can't jail a man because he's ill. If he is ill, he won't go to jail. Come on, fall in. About turn. Quick, march. hasn't come back. Lance? A patrol just came in. They found his carrier burnt out about five miles away. Oh, Susan, this is terrible. Was he... No, the three of them are missing. Arthur, you've got to take a carrier and go out and look for them. Me? What, go out there? You sent them out, Arthur. It should have been you that's missing, not them. You realize what that means? Desertion. But, Susan... You've got to do it, Arthur. I'll go with you, but I can't drive a carrier. Think of Lance and Maxie and Trainee out there. I know, but what can we do with one carrier against the whole of Germany? There's someone coming. Susan? Susan? Oh, it's you, Gwenny. Here it is. Have you broken the news? Yeah, and it seems to have broken him. Excalibur. Now will you come? Wait. Did Susan tell you everything? Yes, yes. Do you agree? Anything, Arthur. Only will you be our driver? Your driver, I'll be your Führer. Come on, let's get going. But how are you going to get out of here? Well, I got in. There must be some way of getting out. Where's the carrier? By the gate. We managed to push it down the slope. Well, try and get it near her while I get out of here. There must be some way to make this move. Excalibur, if ever I needed you, I need you now. You've got to get me out of here. You've got to get me out of here. <laughs> Susan Gwenny, it works again. Good neck. Berlin or bust. Carrier. We should have our camels. Well, girls, I've worked it out. Where are we? Behind the German or Russian lines? I think I ought to remove my hat. Remove your hat? According to my calculations, we're in Westminster Abbey. The only thing to do is to wait and hope for a reconnaissance plane. Oh, I can't wait for that. I'm going to do my own reconnaissance. And what do we do? Stay here and wait for the atrocities? We'll all go.
All we need now is some chase music. Miss Cox, chase music forward. I ho hum, you'll hear this happy song as we go riding round. For the Jerry's go to ground. You can bet money on it. We're fightingly inclined. Mmm, da da da, the strength and joy combined. Gotta feed my bonnet. I'm calling on my poor baby. Was. Hampstead Garden suburb under the new order. It's been well and truly scorched wherever it is. I wonder who had it last, us or them? Oh, them haven't been anywhere near here. Cherries. Well, there's nobody here now. No. Let's scram. Let's. What was that? Sounded like a telephone. Oh. It is a telephone. It's coming from that house. Someone better answer it. Don't touch it. It may be a booby trap. I've read about those things. You lift off the receiver and the house blows up. <coughs> Hello? Oh, sorry. <coughs> he wants to speak to the chief. Is he English? He's talking English. So does Lord Haw Haw. That doesn't mean anything. Find out more. Ask him which chief. Hello, uh, which chief do you want? Don't commit yourself. Oh, more or less. <laughs> I'm Herr von Arthur Excalibur. Herr von Arthur Excalibur. That's right. For Pete's sake, this is Lance. What? It's Lance. Lance? Lance. Who's that? This is me, Gwenny. Gwenny? What are you doing here, my sweet? This isn't your suite, this is me. Where are you phoning from? We're at the other end of the street. We've been ringing every few hours, hoping one of our patrols would hear it and investigate. You mean you're in the same village? Yes! yes. You look outside. Maxie will come out and wave to you. Come on, come on. You heard what the boss said? Go out and wave. Go on, go on. I don't like it. They've been trying to snipe us out of here for days. It may be a trick. Watch out, son. This may be a trap. A trap? What do you mean? We go outside and wave and get mown down by a Tommy gun. Twiddle, you're too suspicious. I told you it was a trap. And there is standing our Jerry, bold like brass. So I'm letting him have it. Well, we've got to get him out somehow. We've got to do something to get them out. We can't even get ourselves out. This looks like a siege. Oh. Hello? That you, Arthur? Look, kid, I know they've got you, but don't worry. We'll get you out somehow. Oh, they didn't get me. They missed me. Now, you just sit tight, Lance. We'll have you out of there in no time. And when I get that guy who fired at me... The guy who fired? That was Maxie. He popped at a jerry. A jerry? But... Hi! Well, bounce me brother with a solid four. Lance, that wasn't a jerry. That was me. Yes, look. Me. Then he ran smack into a bunch of Mark IVs. They gave us one in the bread basket before we had time to get the guns going. And the Quinchic ones for us, we went up in a sheet of flame. How did you get away? They left us for Garners and here we are. Yes, but where are we? You're a patient or where? Well, as far as I can make out, we're about 20 miles south of the Russian flank. There's an advanced German line on our left and forward scouting posts covering all the roads out of here. And snipers, vipers everywhere. Nobody stopped us riding in. Well, they wouldn't have met a outfit. Yes, but they would have tumbled it by now. Oh, stuff and tosh. The place is deserted. You were saying? They tumbled you all right. For your information, let me ask you a question. Where is your carrier? Oh, it's, um... About five miles as the crow flies. If we only had a crow. We've got three five-gallon drums petrol in the cellar. What? What? If we could only get them into the carrier. The bike. I'll put one on the bike. I'll put it in the carrier and come back for you. Back, you fool! Before I go, there's something I must tell you. Gwenny and me are going to be married. What? I thought you'd be surprised. 
Gwenny, what is this? Uh, I'm afraid it's true, Lance. Sorry, old man. Chin up. Arthur, you're crazy. You can't chance it, even in that uniform. Oh, as long as I have Excalibur, I'm safe in any uniform. Gwenny. You're not going to. Let me do the talking. I had to say it, Lance. The little man really believes he's cut out to carry on King Arthur's work. And as I'm Guinevere, he figures he ought to marry me. But he's mad. No, he's not. Lots of little people are like that. They hitch their wagon to a star. Something to look up to, that's all. Arthur's picked history. But she can't wreck her life just because a man thinks he's got a sword. Look, peoples, I've got to telling him about that sword. You mustn't, Maxie. Don't you understand? We wouldn't be here now if it hadn't been for the sword. It... It gives him something. But you're not going to marry him, for heaven's sake. Of course not. But it's got to be broken to him, gently. Look, I'd like to break it to you gently. Unless we get out of here, nobody is going to marry anybody. Hey, somebody, give me a hand with my supplementary. Listen, Titch, I'm coming with you. No, you just told me to get this over handlebars. Doesn't need two of us to go. Never mind what it needs, I'm coming. Jack, you stay here with the others. Susan, throw me that grey coat. Look here, I'll attract Jerry's attention while you do it. Don't worry, Gwenny, we'll be all right. Excalibur won't let us down. Famous last words. Don't... Carrier. Are you absolutely sure this is the proper place? Of course. I remember this piece of grass. It's here somewhere, but it's camouflaged. Do you remember what it looked like? All oh, trees and rocks and things. That makes it easy. Oh, we'll find it sooner or later. Sooner. Pass the petrol, please. Shh. Don't listen now, but can you hear anything? You mean a kind of humming noise? Yes. No, I can't hear anything. Oh, can't you hear that? Sounds like an aeroplane. Look, there it is. Look, it's one of ours. The sea nuts. Whoa! He shot at us. Yes, he did, didn't he? He must have thought we were jerrys. He's coming back! Off with your coat! things thinking that... Yes! Now will you turn back! I'm sorry, Tim. It just started like a joke. It was a joke. A very funny joke. In fact, you know the biggest joke of all? Yeah. I knew it was a joke all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but it didn't was me You'll who... You'll be mentioning dispatches. You'll get a medal. A medal? Who, me? A cook? Hear that, Lancy? Boy. Boy. Oh, hello, 
well, Susan. Well, you don't exactly look like a happy ending. Susan, you were right. I am a jellyfish. According to Joad, even jellyfish have girlfriends. Susan, you mean now that I haven't got to marry Gwenny? I don't see why I should be done out of my love scene. Yippee! Oh, as for this, it can go back to the pageant it came from. Thank you.